Welcome to another scriptural study. In fact, another scriptural name and scriptural word study in which we, together as one, will uncover, yes, we'll explore the uncovering of the Lord Shaw Baal Christmas worshipers. Remember, the word worshipers in plural means persons, people, who show reverence and have an adoration for a deity. So who is this deity that is non-scriptural on Christmas? So this is what we're about to uncover in this scriptural study. Because, did you know that when we uncover the Lord Shah Baal Christmas worshippers, we come to learn very quickly that there are presently on earth today 1.2 billion plus Hindus in the world who worship Ganesha. Ganesha literally means Lord or Shah of the people, Gana, the Shagana, Ganesha, Lord of the people. So 1.2 billion Hindus out of 8 billion plus on earth today, we just surpassed 8 billion based on this resource from worldometers. And that's the first time, supposedly, in human history that we have crossed that threshold of 8 billion people on earth. So, what does Ganesha worshippers have to do with being Christmas worshippers? Well, based on Pew Research, and this is from uh, the pagan month of March 23rd, 2020, so these numbers are higher now, out of 1.2 billion Hindus on earth, 17% of them openly celebrate Christmas. They acknowledge December 25th from the Roman Catholic Church, the Second Babylon. So as I go through this scriptural study, please don't utilize it or weaponize it. I didn't know this information when I was younger, and as I got older and I started to understand it based on loving actions of other Bereans sharing this with me, uh, I obviously was shocked. I was upset. So again, don't weaponize this. It's hard enough to come out of this world and its world traditions. So for each of the world religions that I'm bringing up, and for those of you that are presently in them, this is not intended to be an insult. It's information. It's knowledge. So again, the Pew Research Center recorded 17% of Hindus actually recognize and celebrate Christmas. And Aid also, which is a Muslim uh, tradition, let alone Diwali. Remember, all of these festivals are non-scriptural and they're surrounded by the Festival of Lights just like the Judaic tradition of Hanukkah. It's non-scriptural. It has nothing to do with the appointed times that are written in scripture. So again, don't weaponize this information. The intent of sharing this with these different world religions is not intended to upset, insult. It's sharing of information. What you do with the information once the study is completed is between you and the Almighty Father of Lights, which is Yahuwah. So again, I didn't know this information. And I'm now in my 63rd year. I no longer celebrate birthdays because of this. Because someone took the time to share the uncovering of the Lord Shah Baal, Christmas worshippers, with me and my better three quarters, my wife of over 35 years. So again, I didn't know, but I do now. So this is why we share it in the same manner, and we're doing our best to improve these scriptural studies visually, factually, with the backup information. So there you have it, a great introduction. Because when you say the term the nativity of the Lord, nativity means birthday of the Lord. The Lord who? Jesus Christ. And you'll notice that during December 25th and this time of year, we'll see pictures like this. 
And people think it's Joseph, Mary, and the baby Jesus. But it is not. Historical records and archaeological evidence that we can go out and see here and now have proven that this is none other than Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz from Babylon. So this is why Rome, the second Babylon, preaches this. And yes, the lord of the people, Hindus, who worship Ganesha, the lord of the people, celebrate and are totally in sync with the nativity of the Lord Shah. Now, wait a minute, you're saying, how can you say the term Lord means Shah as well, which is linked to Baal? Well, that's what this scriptural study is all about today, uncovering the Lord Shah Baal Christmas worshippers, which 1.2 billion Hindus out of the 8 billion plus people on earth today are part of this. Remember, December 25th is also the birthday of Sol Invictus, the unconquered sun. As well, the definition of old Nick. Yes, Nicholas is the devil. Go to Merriam-Webster Dictionary and, uh, and or any dictionary. Hashatan is alive and well, regrettably. Did you also know that in Islam, we have 2 billion plus Muslims who recognize their Mongol ethnic heritage through the name Shah Jahan, which literally means Lord or Shah of the universe, Jahan meaning universe. This particular Mughal emperor was uh, again named Shah Jahan, the Lord of the universe, and he is responsible for building the Taj Mahal. The arrival of the Golden Horde Mongols to Egypt resulted in a significant number of Mongols accepting Islam. By the 1330s, three of the four major canates of the Mongol Empire had become Muslim. Again, this is fact-checked, and we encourage everybody viewing these scriptural study videos, regardless of what world religion you are presently associated to, to fact-check this for yourself as well. We are not teachers, prophets, we don't have no prophetic abilities, no saving abilities. We're just Berean study buddies that share information. That same Pew Research Center survey determined that 10% of Muslims, 10% of 2 billion plus Muslims on earth today celebrate Christmas. In fact, it's higher because 21% decorate a Christmas tree and 79% do not. 37% listen to Christmas music and 63% do not, based on this survey. 44% exchange gifts and 56% do not. 49% attend Christmas parties and 51% do not. 94% take advantage again, Muslims, of many of the Christmas time period discounts offered by the retailers, and 6% do not. Do you think the Mongol ethnic heritage would be impressed with the Shah movement of Islam celebrating Christmas? Moving forward, in Islamic theology, Muslims do not worship the Lord Jesus Christ, who is known as Isa in Arabic. Nor do they consider him divine, but they do believe that he was a prophet or messenger of God, Allah, and he is called the Messiah in the Quran. Remember, 100% Muslims in their Islamic theology, theology believe this. Well, it gets worse, because Isa is the short form for the Arabic name Inshallah. Romanized, it is Insha'Allah. Insha'Allah, the Lord God. That's the Arabic pronunciation. It is also spelled Insha'Allah, which also is an Arabic language expression, meaning if the Lord Sha'ah, or God, wills it. Lord Shah or Lord Shah, Allah. 
The Quran also refers to Allah as the Lord of the worlds. Yes, they are also linked to the Lord Shah God, Jesus Christ, by its very definition and their etymology within their own belief system, their own words. So again, this is what's called an etymological fact. From a language standpoint, it's what's called an absolute truth. Now you can deny it, but it doesn't make it any easier in regards to the point that it is an absolute truth from an etymological standpoint. Muslims and Hindus are on the same page. It is an interesting fact from an Hebraic etymological standpoint that the word Sha'ah from the Strong's H 8173 is defined as to be smeared over or blinded. And we now believe, even though we've came out of Christianity, that the Lord Shah God Jesus Christ definitely smears over the truth and blinds people of scriptural facts, let alone basic language etymology. So again, Shah Allah is known as Isa, which is none other than the Lord Shah God or Jesus Christ. Let's read this again. The arrival of the Golden Horde Mongols to Egypt resulted in a significant number of Mongols accepting Islam. By the 1330s, three of the four major Khanates of the Mongol Empire had become Muslim. Why is that so important to talk about? Again, 10% of 1.2 billion plus, or sorry, 2 billion Muslims today celebrate Christmas and 100% of them are linked to the Lord Shah Jesus Christ. It's that basic. Again, here are the facts. They're involved on December 25th in the Saturnalia traditions of men. They're involved in it. No one will argue that. And some of you out there know some Muslims that do indeed celebrate Christmas. So I'm going to talk about the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, Turkey. It's a church. It was the eastern arm of the Roman Catholic Church with Constantine uh, thousands of years ago, and then the Muslims took it over. I'm going to talk about this picture that is painted in that church today and why uh, that personal experience when I was there was so profound for me. There is no doubt that Hindus and Muslims are on the same page with Lord Shah Baal worship. Now, some of you are saying, well, wait a minute. How can Shah be linked to Baal or the Lord? Well, we'll cover that at the end of the scriptural study video. It dawned on me, after all those years traveling to South America, Asia, Middle East, Europe, that resistance is futile when it comes to Lord Baal Shah worshippers because Hashatan is extremely effective. He makes sure that the entire world is deceived or better yet assimilated, syncretized if you will, under the Lord Shah Baal Christmas worship system. And with the advent of social media platforms like Facebook, well, this whole system became or came to be on steroids. So let's talk about this a little further. Again, when you talk about Insha'Allah, Shah is also pronounced in the Arabic as Shah'ah. And in the Hebraic language, which is the start of Arabic, we get in Hebrew Shah'ah, which means to be speared over or blinded. And we firmly now believe, based on the etymology, not our opinions, based on the world religions and how they use language, that Jesus Christ indeed is the Lord Shah Baal, God or Jesus Christ. There's no doubt about it. And it is linked to Muslims and Hindus being fully involved in the celebrations that take place during Sol Invictus or the pagan Gregorian time period of December 25th. 
Religion in Mongolia has been traditionally dominated by two main religions, Mongolian Buddhism and Mongolian Shamanism. Shaman basically means lord or priest man, and it's an ism. And it was the ethnic religion of the Mongols, who in turn became Muslims. An ism is a distinctive practice, a system, a philosophy, typically a political ideology. And if you understand Islam, it's extremely political and it's extremely ideological. But again, Islam wants to deny that they have no part of the present Insha'Allah, which is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. When in fact their own writings linked to Buddhism state the very same thing. Well, you're now saying, well, how can Buddhism be part of this as well? Well, let's take a look at it. So during my travels, I used to be an executive in two world organizations in the logistics industry, and I traveled to well over 54 countries. And if you travel throughout Asia, and you start looking at Buddhism, Taoism, and Shintoism, something very shocking to me uh, was realized. And again, I wasn't the only one that seen this. Other Bereans were telling me this, that this existed already. And I was fighting it. And I used to get the response both at work and some other, with some other Bereans in our scriptural studies. Michael, if you don't know what you don't know, you don't know. It's not a big deal. So basically I was told to, you know, drop the emotion, the opinions, and just do the research. Just let the spirit of diligence, the spirit of truth take over, rather than the emotions that lead us to the spirit of error. Remember, the Ruach is fully aligned with the spirit of truth. It's not emotional. Yes, there are times and needs for him being emotional and passionate, definitely. But again, if you want to know scriptural truth, being overly opinionated based on emotions uh, will no doubt hinder you. So what's so big about these Asian world religions? Well, if you go to a temple, they're called Taisha, Shinsha or Bunshas. They're Lord God temples. Again, Sha is linked to the Lord or Baal. This is not coincidence. Please do your own research. And if you go through Asia during the Christmas time period, boy, oh boy, do they do it big. I've been through Beijing, Hong Kong, Singapore. And if you've ever been to Tokyo, my, oh my, they make Americans look like kindergarten students in regards to the lightings of the tree and all the trappings. They go completely traditional during this time period. So again, some of you that are in Buddhism, Taoism, Shintoism, and some of you that may be watching uh, this present scriptural study video, we are not intending to be insulting or have an intent of being offensive. This is an actual fact that's taking place and you're linked to the Hindus and the Muslims in your etymology of Shah worship slash Lord God worship in your very own temples that anyone can go see the archaeology of them historically. It is what it is. All we're doing is uncovering the Lord Shah Baal Christmas worshipers. That's all we're doing. I used to be one. I've repented of that and I do not walk around using this information now as a weapon. We just share it out of scriptural love with the fruit of the Spirit. Again, it's not my opinion. There are reasons why Satan has deceived the whole world. And in this case, we have 1 billion plus Asians, 2 billion plus Muslims, and 1.2 billion Hindus out of 8 billion on earth that have been deceived. No different than Christians. Again, the nativity of the Lord, word nativity means birthday. The birthday of Tammuz, or Sol Invictus, the unconquered son. Yes, that old Nicholas, Nicolaitans, 
Old Nick the Devil has pulled the wool over everyone's eyes. Hashatan. Moving forward, two billion plus Christians worship Natasha without even knowing it on the pagan non-scriptural Gregorian calendar every Christmas. On December 25th, which is known historically in the Roman Catholic Church as the birth of the Lord Shah. Now, some of you are going, well, wait a minute. How can the word Lord in Christianity be linked to Shah? Well, to prove that, you have to study the word Natasha. What does the word Natasha mean in Christianity? But before we do this, Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the church. The so-called church fathers by the names of Iranius Tertullian omitted from their lists of feasts. Oregon, glancing perhaps at the discreditable imperial Natalitia. This means birth, or linked to birth, of the one on December 25th. That in the scriptures, sinners alone, not saints, celebrate their birthday. And they ridiculed, ridiculed anybody, made fun of people that celebrated birthdays. Why? And why has it been adopted now, even though the early Roman Catholic Church did not celebrate birthdays? The earliest mention of birthdays was that of pharaohs in ancient Egypt. This goes as far back as 3000 BCE. Because when these rulers were crowned, it marked the day they became a god, which was like a spiritual birth. This date would be celebrated and referenced for years to come, by the pharaohs and their people. So this is why early Catholicism, they knew better, they didn't celebrate birthdays, but in time compromised and adopted the traditions of Egypt as well. Are we not to come out of Egypt? Are we not to come out of her? So this is why my better three quarters and I no longer celebrate birthdays, Christmas, or even anniversaries because they rob you of the truth of Scripture and the purpose of the sun, moon, and stars as a celestial clock and calendar. We are supposed to be celebrating the signs that the sun, moon, and stars provide for Yahuwah's appointed times, not the day of our births. And if you understand the Gregorian calendar and how much it's flawed, it does even represent your true birthday. Only the sun, moon, and stars do. So we cover this in this scriptural study video. When is your true birthday and our true turn of the year? And again, for the record, for over 20 years, my wife and I have not celebrated birthdays or anniversaries. And when it comes to birth birthdays, not even our own children, let alone our parents anymore. So it can be controversial, but you don't utilize this information as a weapon. The way is hard pressed. It can be challenging. Another video that we covered uh, on this same subject matter is each and every new moon day and the feast days. But let's get into the origin of the word Christmas because this word for Christmas in late Old English is Christus Mas, which is none other than uh, a death sacrifice. So you're celebrating death, not birth. So this Mass of Christ, first found in 1038, also known as Latin Dies Natalis, Dies Natalis Solis Invictae, the birthday of the Roman solar deity Sol Invictus on December 25th. So again, it has nothing to do with the Mashiach Yahushua, the firstborn of all creation. Nothing to do with his birth. This is something else entirely. Lord Shah Baal worship on Christmas has nothing to do with the firstborn of all creation. Our Father of Lights, Yahuwah himself, the only self-existent one, gave us his firstborn of creation, named Yahushua. Let's get into this a little bit more because this becomes much more prevalent. Again, in Italian, Natal, that's how you say Merry Christmas to somebody in Italian, has nothing to do with scripture. I didn't know this when I was growing up. And if you learn the word Natal or Natalie, 
it's linked to Natasha. From the French, Natalie. From the church, Latin, Natalia. From Latin, Dies Natalis, birthday. In church Latin, Christmas Day. From Natalis, pertaining to birth or origin. From Natis, past participle of Nasi, to be born. Old Nasi, give birth, beget. Originally a name for one born on Christmas. So Yahuwah the Father, the Almighty One, gave us his firstborn of all creation. And it was not on the pagan Gregorian system, Babylonian system of December 25th. So who is this one originally born on Christmas that we're talking about? That the world follows. So Natasha, two billion Christians worship Natasha, which means the birthday of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is another other than Insha'Allah, the Ganesha, the Lord of the people, who Sha'ah blinds them and smears the truth. It's that basic. So again, whether you're Christian, Buddhist, Taoist, or from Shintoism, Muslim, or being a Hindu, everyone's on the same page with this worldwide tradition. Very easy to explain. Now, most of you probably will not accept that Natasha is Hashatan. This is not complicated. Yes, old Nick, Nicolation, Nicholas, the devil. No matter what dictionary, in what language, in any world tradition, in all the world religions, you come to the same conclusion. Now the world is going to fight this. I fought this. It was very controversial when it was first introduced to me. And as time went on, both my better three quarters and I, my wife of 35 plus years, we had a conscious conflict we did not want to share Christmas and all of this anymore to our children. We have three children and they are now over 30 years of age. We were too shocked. We did not want to be part of this anymore. So again, I do not weaponize this. I didn't deliver this message or scriptural study uh, like I am today. I did weaponize it in the past. I no longer do that. For some of you that are coming out from these world religions, again, this is difficult. This is why the way is hard-pressed. It's challenging in this world. So, as we move forward in this study, remember, one billion plus folks in Asia, two billion plus all over the world that are from the Christian uh, religion, the Muslims, the Hindus, Notice the total out of the 8 billion. We're over the 90% range of the total population on earth that are linked to the nativity of the Lord Shah. The Insha'Allah, the Ganesha, the Lord of the people. The Shah'ah who blinds and smears over the truth. Pew Research Center survey also finds that 81% of non-Christians, yes, atheists, agnostics. In the U.S., as per this particular survey, celebrate Christmas, testifying to the holiday's wide acceptance, or at least its unavoidability. Resistance is futile. You will be assimilated in American society. Here's the link to this um, study. Survey. Non-Christians are a diverse group. They include Americans who are religiously unaffiliated, atheists or agnostics, and people who describe themselves religiously as nothing in particular, of whom 87% celebrate Christmas. Well, they're not particular. They're doing the very same thing as everyone else. Worshipping Natasha, Hashatan, Insha'Allah, Ganesha, the Lord of the people on December 25th. Soul Invictus. Old Nick the devil is getting his way. Hashatan 
once again, even with this group of people. But in their minds, they have convinced themselves or deceived themselves to think otherwise. But they're doing it. And here is the saying that I learned many years ago and I stopped doing it. And when people ask me, why aren't you doing Christmas anymore? I started to find ways to be more gentle. And I would say, well, I finally learned that I wasn't doing Christmas. Christmas was doing me. And it was doing me in mentally, physically, financially, spiritually, and on and on the craziness goes. So again, if any of you here are under one of these categories that I've just reviewed, we're not intending to be insulting or offensive in any shape, form, or manner. We are just sharing the etymology and what the world religious theological Lord Shah Baal movement does. That's all we're sharing. What you do with it is between you and the Creator. Yahuwah himself. So as we move forward through this, it is also interesting to know in the etymology that when we ask the question, how would scripture describe leading people astray in one word? So it's not coincidence that the word shasha, one word, means literally in the Hebraic language to lead on. Yes, to make people go astray, apparently to annihilate by confusion. So again, Ganesha, the Lord of the people, the Lord Jesus Christ, Insha'Allah, the Taishas, the Boonshas, the Shinshas, lead people astray. They blind them with Natasha the birth of the Lord on December 25th, none other than Sol Invictus, the unconquered son. Resistance in this world is futile if you stay in it because you will be assimilated. You will be led astray. And it's by design. Old Nick, that Nicolation, the devil himself, will lead you astray. That's his job. That's what he does for a living, so to speak. And his weapon to deceive is none other than the mechanism and systems or faith systems of world religions. Now you might be saying, well, hey, the Hebrew roots and messianic movements are free and clear of all this. Well, is that true? What about Yahusha? Hmm. Isn't that uncanny that that just popped up in the last 10 years? Think about it. Why have we seen Yahusha just pop up in the last 10 years when it's linked to all of these world religions and their Lord Shah Baal worship? Have you ever noticed on Facebook the weaponization of Yahusha? They get downright ugly and mean if you speak about Yahusha. Well, let's explore why. Yasha is another scriptural word for salvation, but not Shah on its own. Shah on its own, the Shin and the Ayin, is not a synonym for salvation and or deliverance. Why? Well, it's simple. Because in any language, when you add and or take away letters, you change the pronunciation and or, more importantly, the original meaning of a word and or name. As an example, take the English word for meat, for instance. Because if you took away the first letter, you know the letter M, the original word meat, would become eat. And thus the pronunciation, let alone meaning of the original word, would be changed to something else. Even small children can understand and or discern these etymological basics, otherwise known as kindergarten phonics. And thus why the prophet Yashayahu is not Shayahu. None of us have the right to take away the letter Yod. Again, Yashayahu, it's not Shayahu. 
and why grown adults are blinded from these basic scriptural etymological, etymological truths is just amazing. Again, yasha is another scriptural word for salvation, but not shah on its own, as it's just another word for deliverance or salvation. Just like the English word salvation has many other words like it, which are called synonyms. Similar words for salvation in English, as per this example from the Oxford languages, as in lifeline, preservation, conservation, means of escape, redemption, deliverance, saving, help, reclamation. So Yasha is just another word in scripture for salvation. And thus why the prophet's name Yashayahu is not Shayahu. Again, you will not find Shah as a root word on its own in Hebrew. But you will find the word Shah, which means to be blinded or smeared over, and the word Shasha, which means to be led astray. So, again, for some of you that are still within the Hebrew roots and Messianic movements, this basic etymological phonetic information is not intended to insult and or offend. It's just etymological empirical fact. What you do with it is between you and the Father of Lights, just like it is for me. Again, resistance is futile. You will be assimilated, especially in the age of fake book. Resistance is futile. You will be pummeled. If you bring this information out, Yahusha is not the son's name. Just like Yashayahu is not Shayahu. This is not complicated. So again, if you add in all of the world religions, let alone the Hebrew and Messianic movements, they are definitely Lord Shah Baal worshippers. Now again, I'm not being insulting. I came from this. I was once a Christian. I was born and raised in Roman Catholicism, and eventually I made my way out, found myself in the Hebrew roots and Messianic movements, and found out that there was no difference, etymologically speaking, let alone from a world tradition standpoint in world religions and what they call their deity. It's all the same. The Lord Baal, Jesus Christ, Insha Allah, Natasha, in their Shinsha, Buncha, and Taishas, because Ganesha is indeed still the Lord of the people. Natasha, regrettably in this world, on December 25th, rules supreme. And remember, the Almighty Yahuwah himself, the only self-existent one, our Father, gave authority for Hashatan to rule here and now but that's only for a set time period. So, Hashatan, or Natasha, is making the best of it, leading people astray while he has time to do it. His time is short. Furthermore, if we go to 1 Melaking Kings, or chapter 18, verse 21, you know the story, folks. You've read it. And it's between the prophet Aliyahu which means my almighty one is Yahu or Yahuwah. And he's fighting a multitude of Lord Shah Baal priests. And he goes to them and says, how long would you keep hopping between two opinions? If Yahuwah is the almighty one, follow him. But hey, if the Lord Shah Baal is yours, well then follow him. But they sat on the fence and they didn't give him an answer. And the neat thing about no matter who you talk to in the Hebrew or Messianic movements, in the Asian Shinsha, Buncha, Taisha, Lord God, Shah temples, or the Muslims or the Hindus, if you talk politely to them about this, they will not answer you a word because it's too controversial. They don't want to accept the fact that Yahuwah provided his firstborn of all creation and named him Yahushua. Now how do we know this? Well, again, there's only one name under the heavens in which we can be delivered. And this scriptural study video, which is almost seven years old now, goes over this information about Baal, Lord Shah Baal. 
And we covered this in the latest scriptural study video with these basics from scripture because scripture interprets scripture. How do these scriptures reveal the words for salvation with our deliverance, my deliverance, or your deliverance? So scripturally, if you say our deliverance, it uses the word. It's a verb, Yeshua. It's not a name. A verb is not a noun or a pronoun. Names are nouns. An action is a verb. O Yahuwah, show us favor, for we have waited for you. Be their arm every morning. Our deliverance, or Yeshua, also in a time of distress. How do you say my deliverance from a scriptural standpoint? Yeshayahu, Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. See all the Almighty One, Strong's 410, who is Yahuwah, is my deliverance, which is pronounced Yeshuati. Yeshuati equals my deliverance. The verse goes on to say, I trust and am not afraid for Yah, H3050 from the Strong's, Yahuwah. H3068 is my strength and my song, and he has become my Leshua, my deliverance. Leshua equals deliverance. How do you say from a scriptural standpoint, for your deliverance? Bear sheath, or Genesis chapter 49, verse 18. I've waited for your deliverance. Leshua Taka, O Yahuwah. The psalmist said it the same way. My eyes have been pined away for your Leshua Taka, your deliverance. It goes on further in Psalm 119 and verse 166. Yahuwah, I have waited for your deliverance. Lashua Taka. Psalm 119, 174. I have longed for your Lashua Taka, O Yahuwah. Please, with all the love and scriptural fruit of the Spirit that I can bear up, like others before me uh, did for me and my family, the Lord Shah Baal Jesus Natasha is the key to hell. But Yahushua unlocks the door to heaven. So I'll share a little bit more of my background. I don't share much of it. I don't think it's important. But I also came to these conclusions uh, etymologically because I went to these places. So true story. I was in Istanbul three times in my life and I went to the Hagia Sophia which is uh, the Eastern Orthodox arm of Rome. Uh, used to be the original Roman Catholic Church of Constantine. And then the Muslims took it over and it's now called the Hagia Sophia. Well, if you go in there, in one of the domes, I had two managers that took me and they were both Muslims. Uh, remember, I used to be an executive for two uh, worldwide logistic companies. And these two particular management people were fabulous. And we went in there and I say, look at that picture. Now, what the Muslims did when they captured the Hagia Sophia, as they called it, in Istanbul, Constantinople, in old times, they whitewashed all of the murals inside this church. And this is a picture of Semiramis and uh, Tammuz. And that's why Muslims, they knew better. They did their homework. They knew it was not proper to celebrate you know this because it wasn't true scripturally remember muslims know the first five books of the pentateuch very well so they whitewashed all these drawings so if you go there today the whitewash is wearing off after hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years so i looked at my two managers and i said look i said you should whitewash that again because that's none other than semiramis and tammuz and their faces lit up and they were shocked. And they said, how do you know this? I thought well, you were Christian. Are you Jewish? And I responded, of course not. I'm, not. I'm neither Christian nor Jewish. And they said, well, how do you know this information? And I said, well, thankfully there were other Bereans out there that helped me with a proposed scriptural study format to dig this out. And I'm glad to be here today. And I'm very thankful you know, for these two managers management people that toured me around Istanbul, including this place, because as a cute little white boy from Canada, uh, you don't walk the streets of Istanbul on your very own. And they were kind enough on their time off to bring me to this place. So that's a true story. And it resonated with me. And uh, we have remained friends ever since I've retired. And now they're looking at Islam as having holes in it as a world religion. It's, it's not strong. It's not, it's like Christianity, Hinduism, 
messianic or Hebrew roots. It's faulty based on what we've shared here in this presentation. I've toured Rome. Everything I've shared with you, if you get the opportunity, go into the Vatican, you'll see this Lord Shaw information for yourself. When I was in Rio de Janeiro, the statue on a mountain, they are worshipping the Shah. The Shah Allah. They're not talking about this statue. They're talking about a baby that was born on December 25th. All these people that are going around this statue on top of the mountain in Rio de Janeiro, South America, that is the main conversation. Because their deity, they can handle. It's a baby. It's not the king of kings. It's not the masters of masters. It's not the firstborn of all creation. They don't want to hear the scriptural narrative. They like the one from Talladega Nights. And if some of you have seen that movie, you'll get what I'm talking about. And when I traveled throughout the Middle East, it was shocking to learn who Shah Jahan was. So, yes, Ganesha, the Lord of the people, the Lord Shah, Jesus Christ, the Yahusha, has nothing to do with the Father's name or the Son's name. But we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12, the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Hashatan. Old Nick, Nicolaitan belief, with all power and signs and wonders of falsehood, and with all deceit of unrighteousness. So, Hashatan is doing his job. He's deceiving the whole world. Because there's not one world religion, or one Hebrew or Messianic movement that will share the following. We go to Tehillim, meaning praises, or Psalms now in chapter 89, verses 26 through 27. He, Yahushua, they use H3091, the six letters, Yahu, Shua, which brings the connotation of crying out, but Shua, as we've already covered, also is associated to salvation or deliverance or rescue. He, Yahushua, cries out to me. Who does he cry out to? The Father, the self-existent one. And it says what? You are my father. Yahushua says, you are my father, my almighty one, and the rock of my deliverance. Remember, Yahushua cried out to his father for his deliverance. So what does Yahuwah do? I, Yahuwah, also appoint him Yahushua, firstborn, highest of the sovereigns of the earth. But on that Rio de Janeiro statue on South America, that one day the people surrounding it were talking about a baby on December 25th, the Natasha nativity of the Lord. So Psalms is verified further by Colossians, the emissary Shaul, chapter 1, verses 12 through 16, giving thanks to the Father who has made us fit to share in the inheritance of the set-apart ones or separated ones from the world in the light who has delivered us from the authority of darkness and transferred us into the reign of the Son of his love, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, who is the likeness of the invisible Almighty Father Yahuwah, the firstborn of all creation. The Mashiach, the anointed one of the Father, Yahushua the Son, the firstborn of all creation, is not the Father, but he is in the likeness of his Father, just like my firstborn and my children are in the likeness of me. But they're not me. Again, the firstborn of all creation is the Mashiach Yahushua, because in him, Yahushua, were created all that are in the heavens and that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or rulerships or principalities or authorities, all have been created through him and for him. Yes, this is a spiritual discussion and can come with some spiritual warfare. But the good news is, as per Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. This is why I'm saying don't weaponize this information. But yes, the good fight is against the principalities. What's a principality? Well, it's a world religion that exists within a government or a state 
of earth. All of these world religions, including Christianity, Rome, the mother church of Christianity, exists in the country of Italy, and it's its own, it's a principality within that country or government. All of these world religions worship the Lord Shah Baal in some form. Now you might be saying, well, what about Judaism? Well, as you know, Judaism will not call on Yahuwah and his name. And they don't even use the proper title for him. But they will bring out what's known as Adonai, which the definition is my Lord. Our only teacher, the Mashiach Yahushua, as it states in Matthew 23, verses 8 through 10, he said he was our only teacher. Why? Because he does the Father's words. He follows what his wa- Father gave him. So what does our only teacher say in Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 through 23? Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the reign of heavens. There are reasons for this, and we now take them seriously. And we don't weaponize this information. We share it out of love through the fruit of the Spirit. And yes, it can get controversial. But we are learning day in and day out not to wrestle against the flesh and blood with any human being. Take this information to the world institutions, those principalities. Yasha means salvation, not Shah. Hosea says it's best. And for you out there that think Husha is the name, think about what you're saying. Because Moses did what? He changed the name to Yahushua. Not Yahusha. Yahushua. If the name Hosh, Hush, Husha was okay, why did he change it to Yahushua? Think about this, folks. Because Hosea does say in chapter 2, verse 16, And it shall be in that day, declares Yahuwah, that you call me my husband and no longer call me my Baal, Lord Shah. Here's the cool thing about world religions. And it's a funny thing. They can't be all right. Meaning they can't ha- have everything right, each and every one of them. But together they can be all wrong. Again, this is not my opinion. When it says how Shatan has deceived the whole world, shouldn't each and every one of us search those things out like a Berean should? To find out what those mechanisms are? Remember, world religions will not call upon the name. They will not do it. And this is why prophecy proves Yahushua is the son's name. If you have the time, please take a look at this scriptural study video. So, we continue to call out, to cry out to Yahuwah, our father of lights, the only self-existent one, that he continues to keep and guard us and to remove us from Lord Shah Baal Christmas worship faith systems. So in closing, May the firstborn of all creation, the Mashiach, Yahushua, the one who cried out to his father for his deliverance, be in everything we say and do. Have a awesome day, everyone.